Okay, it's your girl, Lady Mila. Today's subject is going to touch on, no, I'm not crazy. And no, you're not crazy. See, folk like the, who do you wrong, <clears throat> they like to try to make you feel like you're the crazy one. They like to try to flip the situation and circumstance on the back that, hey, why is this person acting out like this? Why are they talking to me like this? Why are they treating me like this? Oh, they're the crazy one. Look at them acting a fool. No. But see, they do that to reflect the attention on you and deflect the attention on them because they don't want people to know that they're really the fucked up ones in the situation. They're really the ones who were out here throwing a rock and hiding their hand. See, they forget to mention that you would have never entertained them had they been honest. They came through your doors with deception. They didn't tell you they were married. They didn't tell you they had five kids by five different baby moms. They didn't tell you they didn't have a job and that their intent was to get so close to you to move in because they couldn't take care of themselves and they were eyeballing what you had. They didn't tell you that they were uh, child molesters. They didn't tell you that they were uh, domestic violence prone. They didn't tell you that they were narcissistic and that every other word that came out their mouth when they were upset were calling you a bitch or a whore or, or this or that. If you ask them to do simple things like give you money for groceries, oh, now you a begging bitch. Go down there and apply for food stamps with your sorry ass, especially if you were one who they said, hey, I'll take care of you. You don't have to work. Um, and then you, you believe that. And now when it's time for you to go out here and buy yourself some panties or underwear, now you use a, use a begging bitch. <laughs> Hey, you's a sorry bitch. You can't even take care of yourself. You was used to getting your nails done, your hair done. And now he's like, oh, I'm not paying for that. Go out here and sleep with the next man so you can get that. You can't get your own shit done. But you were the one who wanted me to quit my job to come live with you. No, you're not crazy. <laughs> These people won't tell you this until they're through your doors and start calling you all kinds of whores. That's what they do. Then, when they throw too many rocks and they keep landing upside your head and they try to hide your hand and then you decide to go upside their head, now you the crazy one. Now you the crazy bitch. Oh, now I can open up the door to put my hands on, on her because now she want to stand up for herself and tell me what I am. Because I can't take it, now I'm going to slap the taste out of her mouth because she's telling me I ain't shit. Because she's checking me at all my points. Oh, yeah. They never they never want to tell you that. They never want to admit that. They just want to make it look like you're the crazy one. Let me tell you something that's crazy. <clears throat> when you let a man into your house and around your kids and you don't know, he turns out to be a child molester. And you decide that even after knowing that, you're going to stay with that man. That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. You get with a man or a woman, and they knowingly have an STD, and they don't tell you about it. That's crazy. That's crazy. And then when you and then when you get out of character of being that cool, calm, collective person and you start motherfucking going off, oh now you crazy. No, that ain't crazy. That's completely sane and completely justified. Don't let these people push that be the bigger person shit on you. If Jesus wanted to turn his other cheek to get slapped after being slapped the first time, that's on Jesus. I will cuss your ass out today so I can feel better today. 
And then tomorrow, what I need to do is go on about my business. Okay? When you have purposely hurt someone, knowing that's what you did, when you have purposely deceived someone, knowing that was your intent, when you have purposely lied on someone, knowing that that's what you did, and then tell the world that that person is crazy, something is wrong with you, not them. <laughs> you want to make it seem like that was them. No, that was you. <laughs> you were the shitty mother. You were the shitty father. And when your daughter, your son grows up to be shitty parents like you were, what do you do? You either welcome them into the fold and say, hey, add a girl, add a boy, you know, and don't don't correct the behavior because you weren't strong enough to break the cycle. And or you're going to sit there and talk about your daughter and son. Oh, I always knew they wasn't going to be shit because you wasn't shit. Because you, you, didn't, you didn't show them or give them a foundation. I come from... Uh, a broken family. Both of my grandparents were in broken relationships. My mother and father were divorced by the time I was seven. I come from a household and where I was physically and sexually abused. And my mother knew about it and did absolutely nothing. And she stayed with that man. And then he turned around and did it to my sister, who was his biological daughter that he had with my mother, and she knew about it, and she still stayed with that man. That's what I come from. That's where I come from. Just to show, save a little background, let's go ahead and speed that up. And I've got some stories that we can talk about on another, on another video. Some of them will make you laugh because they were great. Some of them will make you cry and <laughs> probably ready to hurt somebody. Because if it wasn't for me having to sit down several times in correctional facilities, I could have been doing 25 years to life because that's how much anger I had in me for what I had went through and I hadn't healed from. Right now, I'm on my healing journey. And baby, let me tell you, it ain't, it ain't the prettiest. Some days are better than others. Some days I just want to pick up shit and start throwing things. Some days I'm on my kumbaya shit. It has been a roller coaster ride. Nobody wants to, to revisit their trauma in order to heal from it, but that's what you have to do. So don't, make, don't let anybody make you feel like you're crazy because no, you're not fucking crazy. They don't like to talk about what they did to make you crazy. I was with a man for way longer than I should have been. And his family never wanted to correct the situation and his behavior because they were all toxic. He was toxic. I had toxicity in me. So like attracted like, and I was being abused verbally and physically in that relationship all while when he got around his family and mine smiled all up in his face in fact we both pretended like it was okay till i stopped pretending and started showing my ass now all of a sudden they don't like me they don't talk about what they did to poke the bear they don't talk about the disrespect they give the fact that uh he let his kids openly and outright disrespect me with no care and concern do you know this man said to me First of all, let me tell you something. When I got with him, I didn't initially know he was married. He made it seem like he was divorced. And I believed it because we both live in separate places and he was not in the same household as his wife. And she had already had someone else. One of the most disgusting things that he said to me was, I'm not going to get divorced from her because that bitch has AIDS. And she's going to die any day now. And I want to collect her social security. And I won't be able to do that if I get divorced. I can just imagine what he has said about me behind my back. 
what he has said to his so-called friends, his family, hell, anybody who would listen. The disgust in that statement alone and then me still staying with him made me question myself, my judgment. And I had not been given the foundation that I needed to know what a healthy relationship looked like or anything. So I was attracting toxic everything. My son's father was toxic. There was all kind of cheating and physical abuse in there. And I went to jail behind uh, him um, in, 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 in a situation, in several situations, just because I couldn't control my anger. And he was doing things to provoke me, like bringing our son around other women. Um, he even wanted one of the women... Um, um, he, he said he was getting her as a babysitter for our son. I was paying $90 a, a week to her out of my own paycheck at that time. Babysitting, I guess babysitting was cheap then. I was so happy because the daycares were like, you know, $200 a week and $135 a week. And just depends on what daycare you went to. Long story short, speeding it up, he was over there having a sexual relationship with her and saying that that was my son's babysitter. All while she used to open the door, smile on my face as I got off of work and picked my son up. And I got some stories on that. That will make a person, especially if they think they're in love with you and you didn't really know it was lust or that it was really toxic because like I said, the foundation was not there. So what you think may be love or all that you know to be love is not it sometimes. And anyway, um, that's the type of thing that will make you lose your damn shit. Especially when you're dealing with kids, dealing with matters of the heart. He and I live together. You know, I got an engagement ring on from him. And all the while you over there cheating with, with this bitch. And this hussy knew I was with you. Didn't have a care in the world. I had two kids of my own with no father in the picture. Just all kinds of stuff. So the answer is no, you're not crazy. I'm not crazy. These folks need to tell what they have done, who they are, and admit to what they do, and they'll never do it. Because they're not sorry. They don't care. And as long as they can continue to get away with it, they will. So call their ass out. Tell them, hey, I'm not the one to be fucked with. Let them know who you are and don't have no shame about it. Don't sit up here and feel bad because now they want to talk about you looking at acting out a fool in this family reunion. No. Do you know how many bitches I was called on my way to this family reunion? Do you know he reached over and slapped me in my face? Now that I have one too many drinks and sick of his shit and sick of y'all shit, now y'all get it. Don't, don't feel bad. But the best thing to do to restore your peace is to just remove yourself from that situation. And it is easier said than done, especially when you think it's love, you're comfortable, finances are tied up in it, children are tied up in it, you're familiar with the BS, you're comfortable in your own shit storm. No, it's not easy. So don't let someone tell you that it is. Sometimes you're going to yo-yo, especially you've been in it for a long time. You get lonely sometimes. You start you start drinking. You start smoking, whatever it is that you do, and, and your mind stops being clear. Your spirit, your vessel stops being clear, and you start treading back to the same bullshit. Sometimes it happens. It has happened to me too many times, I know. But when you get sick and tired, you'll be sick and tired. When you get slapped that last time, and now you done slap, slap someone back, and now you sit in a, a jail cell, you're going to say to yourself, it wasn't worth it. When you have lost that job, because that person came up there acting a fool, you, you was drinking before you went, and, and you lost everything because you lost your... It's not going to be worth it. You're going to find out it's not worth it. And the, and the more that you don't listen to God, whomever that may be to you, to your intuition, to your insight, to, to saying, 
move away from that situation. Every time you go back, it's going to be worse than it was before. And, and the reason why it's going to be worse is because you know better. You know better. Some people don't want to change. Some people are just filthy, nasty, disgusting, miserable people. You know why misery loves company? Because misery don't like being by itself in its own shit and have to smell it. Because that's when they do smell it is when they are by themselves. And when good people start to heal by themselves, trust me, you don't want to, after a while, you, you, you do not want to lose your peace. Once you find it, you don't, you are not going to let it go. And that's when everybody's going to start calling you, wanting to make amends or try to pretend like what happened didn't just happen. Didn't you just call me a bitch two days, two, two, two weeks ago? Two days ago, two hours, now you calling me? And there's no uh, an apology. There's no sincere, I'm sorry, there's nothing. It's just trying to pick up where we left off because you want to disturb my peace again? Hell no. And that's what they do. Mama, you want to call me talking about <laughs> uh, how you doing, baby girl? Bitch, I'm doing just fine without you in my fucking life. Bringing hell there. Stare your ass over there. I am doing just fine. <laughs> you know? So, don't let... First of all, don't forget what you've been through. Second of all, give yourself a hug, a kiss pat on the back for everything that you had to pick your ass up out of and keep going forward from. Don't you let them tell you you crazy because you're not. It's them that's crazy. <laughs> they don't want to admit to what they have done and they probably never will. Most of them will take it to their grave and, and that's it. Let me tell you something. From my heart to yours, I love you, be strong, take it to God. If you got to cry about it, cry about it. If you got to scream about it, scream about it. Don't let nobody tell you how you choose to express yourself is wrong. But after you've done that, move on. That's my word. Hugs and kisses from me to you. It's your girl, Lady Mila.